Hey, welcome back. Um, right, today I'm going to be brewing up my final batch using this hot light dried raw extract. So um, I bought a big box of these because they were out of date and on offer. So I've seen one of the online retailers was selling these bags, 500 gram bags off for a pound each. So um, the tight arse in me couldn't resist such a uh, tempting bargain. So um, yeah, I bought a whole box of them and um, I've been experimenting. So I've had mixed results, I say mixed results. So I've uh, not had much success with them so far. Um, as they're pre-bittered, uh, I've been a bit cautious about kind of adding too much bitterness through my hops to it and you know, having an over-bittered beer. Um, but what I've actually found is that there's hardly any bitterness coming from these. So my first batch was um, just brewed with these just pure um, hot light dry malt extract, fermented out and then dry hopped. That was kind of my baseline. That was a bit, well, nothing really. It wasn't very appealing, it wasn't, it, in fact, it didn't clear for some reason. It's very cloudy. I'll probably put the video on at some point. Um, it's hardly any bitterness to it. It's pretty disgusting, really. It's not a very nice drink. It's, it's quite, I overestimated the alcohol content and underestimated the the bitterness, so it's kind of a very alcoholic tasting, unbittered beer. Um, so yeah, so that was my lesson learned from that. So what I'm going to do is pretty much ignore the fact that these are stamped as hot light dried malt extract and, and treat them more like just a, a light dried malt extract. So there's going to be some bitterness from them, but I've kind of scaled that right back. Um, and um, I'm going to add a lot more bitterness from my, from my hops in this particular brew. So, um, what I'm aiming at here is kind of like a um, English best bitter style. Um, so, it's obviously been, it's going to be based around this hot, light dried malt extract. It's a 19 litre batch. I'm adding two kilograms, so that's four packs of these, um, into it. So, that's kind of like my main fermentables. Um, so, what I found as well, it kind of lacked a bit of body, really, funny enough, considering it's all light dried malt extract. Um, so I'm going to add a bit more kind of uh, body and sort of grain character, malt character from using some steeped grains. So it's a good opportunity for me to use up some odds and sods that I've got lying about. Um, I've got some caramel here, so I'm going to be adding 100, uh, sorry, 50 grams of caramel. So um, what I found with using too much of this is it, it adds a lot of sweetness to it. And then if you're not getting that bitterness to offset it, then you get a kind of sweet beer. So I'm being over cautious on that. I'm just adding 50 grams of caramel. By the way, I'm doing a mini mash on this one. So rather than just a steep, I'm actually going to mash some grain. So just in a two litre pot, uh, like a mini cooler thing, I'm going to actually mash some grain. So I'm going to be using 200 grams of pale ale malt, which obviously needs mashing, not steeping. Um, I've got 120 grams of wheat malt that also needs mashing. Um, and 50 grams of caramel and 20 grams of black malt, uh, just to add some color to bring it into the best bitter um, category. Um, so uh, only 20 grams, I think I used 40 last time and it, it gave me quite a nice dark beer. It adds a real nice kind of red hue to the beer, this uh, black malt, funny enough, but I don't, want to, I don't want to sort of have a too dark bitter, I want it to be a nice and light colored bitter. Um, so yeah, there's my wheat malt. Um, I'm using East Kent Golden Hops, and I've also got some First Gold Hops. Uh, I'm going to be doing a 15 minute boil. So over the course of that 15 minutes, I'm going to be adding, um, at the start, 25 grams of East Kent Golding and 10 grams of First Gold. Uh, five minutes to go, I'm going to have 15 grams of East Kent Golding. And then uh, as a hop stand, I'm going to do, um, 10 grams of East King Golding and 10 grams First Gold. So probably a bit more hoppy than a kind of a best bitter, English best bitter uh, might be, but um, yeah, kind of, that's the way I like my beers. So that's the way I'm gonna brew it. So hopefully that's gonna give me 32 IBUs based on my underestimation of the bitterness of this. Might turn out a bit more, but it's kind of a bit of wiggle room there. So as a minimum, I think I'm gonna get around about 30 IBUs, which is fine. So, 
Yeah, so that's it. So, um, yeah, I'll get this mashed. I'm probably going to mash those grains for about 45 minutes. I'm not too worried about kind of, you know, getting the best efficiency I can. I just really want to get the, um, these grains mashed and the sugars out of them. Um, and then I'm going to bring that to the boil with um, another couple of litres of water, which I'm going to add. And I'm also going to add one of these packs of um, dried malt. So my boil is going to consist of probably about four or five litres of uh, water with the, um, the wort from the steeped, sorry, mashed grains and um, the uh, dried malt extract. Um, so yeah, and that's how I'll be doing my boil. So yeah, um, I'll be fermenting that out with just a general purpose ale yeast from across my loaf, which I've used loads of times. It's kind of like their bulk standard ale yeast, but it's a really good yeast. And um, yeah, so hopefully nice straightforward brew and I'm going to be chucking this into a pressure barrel because it's a nice kind of autumn weather now, perfect for um, storing and serving your ales out of pressure barrels like I do in this, this time of year. So this one's going to be dumped into there and yeah, so uh, should keep me going for a bit. So, all right, well, let's get on with it and I'll show you how I do it. Right, the lid's on. I'll set the timer for about 45 minutes, um, which should be plenty um, for that little mash. And uh, while that's doing, I'm going to weigh out my hops to get that ready. All right, my grains have been mashing now for getting on 50, 55 minutes. Um, I was in no rush, I was having a cup of tea and stuff, so uh, it's all good. Can't really over mash it as such, so uh, it's all good. Um, it's looking quite dark and malty in there. Lovely aromas coming off of it. Right, I'm just going to transfer this wort into my pot, which already contains 500 grams of red light dried malt extract and two litres of water. So that's bringing it up to approximately sort of four litres. I've um, got the heat going on this already. It's, it's, it's fairly dark at the moment, so it should be a nice colour beer when it's finished. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring this to the boil. Once it's reached the boil, right, just reached the boil, so ready for my first hop addition. Um, I've bagged them up. Um, so when you buy hops from Cross My Loaf, they're generous enough to give you these hop bags, um, or one sort of per order, which I don't tend to use that often, but I've collected a few and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to use these save on mess and tidying up. So I've got my three hop additions, first, second, and third. So I'm ready for my first one. I'm just gonna drop this in and away we go. Oops, right, number two, uh, second edition. Uh, going in with five minutes remaining on the boil. So I'm gonna set my timer now for five minutes. That's the 15 minutes up on the boil, so I'm just going to turn off the heat and put my final hop addition. So this is going to be a hop stand, 10 minutes. Just going to leave that to steep in there for 10 minutes um, before I add in the rest of my dry malt extract. All right, I've transferred the uh, the wort to the fermenter, added the rest of my dry malt extract, topped it up to just over 19 litres, added some pure brew, Harris pure brew, and pitched the yeast. Luckily the temperature was 21 degrees after topping it up with cold water, so perfect pitching temperature. I'm going to chuck this in the firm fridge now, probably 19 degrees, and let it go for a couple of weeks probably. See you at the tasting. Welcome back to the tasting. So, um, I've had this in the pressure barrel now for probably, well, I don't know, maybe six weeks, something like that. This is definitely a Phoenix from the Flames beer. Um, it was determined to escape from my pressure barrel. Um, so I originally uh, put it straight from the fermenter into the pressure barrel. It's one I haven't used for ages. Um, and I've, I think I remember why now, is because last time I used it, it leaked. Um, so anyway, screwed the cap on tight, left it for a couple of weeks, went to give it a sample, flat as a pancake. So, uh, reprimed it with more sugar, 
resealed it. A couple of days later, it's pissing out the tap. So delay the pressure barrel on the back, on its back, take the tap out, reseal it, more sugar to prime it. Um, a few days later, the tap blew off the front. So <laughs> it's leaking from the tap again. So again, on its back, take the tap out, replace the tap and the seal this time, reprime it. So I actually ended up repriming it a probably three or four times. So it's had another three or four hundred grams of sugar in it. Um, so that obviously bumped up the ABV, but it is now uh, well confined in the pressure barrel. So um, it's staying where it should be. It's in there just about. Um, and so it took a little longer to actually condition um, than I was hoping for. But anyway, long story short, here it is. This has just come straight out of the pressure barrel. Um, it's got quite a nice little sort of foamy head on the top, um, as you'd expect from the pressure barrel. And I, I do like beer served from the pressure barrel this time of year. Um, I don't have the space to keep them cool during the summer, but um, I do like drinking them from the pressure barrel. Nice sort of spritzy carbonation. Um, and it just feels like a nice cask beer when it's from there. So I thought this was perfect for serving out of that. Um, it was supposed to be a kind of maybe an extra special bitter or something along those lines, or maybe an ordinary bitter, I don't know. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, looking at it, I'd say it was about the same colour as um, sort of like a Timothy Taylor landlord type bitter. Um, so it's sort of quite a light bitter, but it's pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. So in terms of looks, I'd say spot on, exactly how I uh, was hoping it came out. Um, Sort of a nice head, as I say, as you'd expect from the pressure barrel. Um, it's sort of holding on the top there, so it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty impressed. Um, in terms of aroma, um, you can definitely sort of smell the caramel malts coming through. There's a nice hoppy sort of floral note from the East Kent Goldings and maybe a bit of sort of orangey marmalade aroma coming from the first gold hops, which is um, quite nice actually. So um, yeah, I'd say if you were served that in a pub, you'd be pretty pretty pleased at this point, having just received it. So what does it actually taste like? Hmm. Pretty darn good, I have to say. Um, so it is a little bit caramelly, what you'd expect from having caramel malt in there. Um, it tastes a hundred times better than the last version of uh, this beer that I did with the hot light dried malt extract. And this time obviously I pretty much ignored the fact that it was hot and just used it as um, light dried malt extract. It's a nice bitterness from it. You know, I am, uh, it's obviously subjective, but I would say that it tastes like a sort of a beer that was somewhere between 30 and 40. IBUs, so there's actually a very nice, pleasant bitterness coming from it. Um, in terms of hop, it's really nice actually. Um, East Kent Goldings give it a nice sort of floral taste um, that you might expect from probably more sort of summery beers, but um, the first gold is pretty obvious in there. Um, didn't use too much, I can't remember exactly how much, I'll have to have a look back on the video, but. Um, it, it's, I've used it before and it's a kind of a, it's a bit of a bully. It's kind of elbowing the oldies, Kent Golding out of the way a bit and sort of pushing itself up the front there. But um, it's not unpleasant, it's quite nice actually. You get that nice sort of, almost like burnt orange marmalade type um, flavor from it, which is quite pleasant. It goes well with um, the bitterness and the sort of malt, malt profile that's coming through this. Um, so yeah, I did the mini mash. Um, I think that probably helped quite a bit, got a bit more sort of malt and grain character coming through in this beer. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd say this one is a success, um, much more so than the previous uh, two uh, versions I did with the hopped uh, light dried malt extract. Um, probably wouldn't use it again, to be perfectly honest. It's a bit of a you know guessing game as to how much bitterness it's actually going to provide in the uh, finished product. Um, the guidance seems a bit off to be perfectly honest. So I'd probably stick to the, the 
just the regular light drive malt extract next time I did it, but it was only a pound, a, uh, a pound for 500 grams of it on, um, on sale. So this beer's cost me pretty much next to nothing. Um, I, what I would say as well is the yeast that I use, the Cross My Leaf General Purpose Owl Yeast, has come out spot on on this. So I tried this a couple of days ago and I was racking my brains as to what uh, yeast I'd actually put in there. I thought it was the um, Mangrove Jacks, I think it was, is it the Old Empire one? That uh, gives that really sort of nice fruity uh, flavour to, uh, to the beer. And um, it's actually really good. It's probably one of the best yeasts I've used for a long time. And it's like they're sort of running the mill, fairly cheap yeast really. Um, so definitely be using that again. Um, I've used it previously, a long time ago, but must have forgotten how good it was. Um, so yeah, that, that's a definite plus point as well. So really, really happy with this. And I've got quite a few more pints lined up in my uh, pressure barrel, which is nice. I'm not sure it will see, if, well, see its way through to Christmas as a few weeks ago, but um, I'm certainly going to be enjoying a few pints tonight. It's Friday night. So yeah, cheers everyone.